Okay, so this is going to be probably one of the most important videos I have made on this channel and is going to be about what you can learn from dating a BPD or an MPD. And these might be things that you're learning as you are still in that relationship or these are things that you might learn once you have left the relationship, whether that was three months ago or three years ago. Before that, great if you can just drop a like, really appreciate that. So when you date a BPD and an MPD, one of the positives is that you hopefully can get a lot of good learnings out of that relationship that you can bring with yourself to any other future relationships you have, whether these are romantic relationships, relationships with friends or even at work. So I'll, I'll just explain some of the concepts that I learned about after dating a BPD and an MPD. The first big realization for me was the fact that not everyone is quote unquote good. So if you are the type of person that is watching these kind of videos, there's a very, very good chance. I would say almost all of you are most likely pretty caring, fair people. You objectively look at your own mistakes and you try to correct them and you try to learn from them. You try to understand relationship dynamics. You try to understand what has happened in your relationship. This is all proof that you are a very caring and good person. Because if you did not care, then you wouldn't spend the time scouring the YouTube or Google or whatever else trying to understand what has happened. This is something that only someone who cares does. Many other people, they would just move on onto the next relationship, onto a rebound or whatever else, and they would not spend the time to do introspection. So when you are someone with this personality uh, and you know you have these traits, then one of the risks is that you might think that everyone else in the world is similar to you. So while you're spending time watching videos, trying to understand what has happened in the relationship, questioning whether you have done everything correctly and so forth, you kind of expect that this is the way that everyone else operates in the world. But that's far, far, far from the case. In fact, Actually, one could argue that many are actually very not very self-reflective at all. They're unapologetic. Uh, they don't really spend time looking at their own actions and their own mistakes and try to correct them. So I don't want to sound too hopeless, but if you meet someone who crosses boundaries and does something obviously wrong, they're likely going to be doing it again and again. And it's very important that you learn from this. And it's very important that you understand that not everyone out there is as caring as you are and correct as you are. The second very important learning from a relationship, in particular a relationship with a BPD and an MPD, is that you should not ignore red flags. Now, unless the BPD or the MPD was a uh, extremely intelligent psychopath, which is very unlikely, you will have noticed some red flags in your relationship with them. It might be red flags that you noticed one week after you start dating, something that they said, the way that they behaved, or it might be red flags that you notice a little bit later. But for sure, there have been some red flags early in the relationship. I think one of the first videos I had on this channel was actually about early red flags that I witnessed. And oh my God, I'm embarrassed to even think about them. But what happens is that once you see those red flags, you choose to ignore uh, those red flags. And you might do it for a variety of reasons. You might do it because you're really excited and interested in this person and you don't want to lose them over something that, yes, is a red flag, but, you know, maybe is not that, that, that bad. You know, maybe they didn't cheat on you, but maybe they did something that stopped right before, you know, and since you like them a lot, you decide, okay, you know what, I'm just going to ignore it for now. And... Uh, but this is very short term thinking because yes, you're saving yourself from the pain of having to end a relationship or a dating period or whatever it is you're in a situation ship by ignoring the red flag. But that red flag is going to come and bite you a few months later or a few years later. So it's very important that once you notice a red flag that you leave that relationship and you take the loss now rather than later. For me in particular, it wasn't really so much how much I liked someone. I don't think that I ignored the red flags because I liked someone. In fact, in the early stages of relationships, I usually don't like people that seriously. It was more actually because of this, because I felt, you know, I'm not so emotionally attached to this person, you know, so yes, this is a red flag, but you know, it doesn't really annoy me because it's not so, so serious for me. But of course, 
then the relationship tends to become more serious. You tend to fall in love. And then, then you live the consequences of having ignored that red flag. At least that was the case for me in all the relationships where I ignored red flags. The third point is that people don't change. And this is very, very important. Or people rarely change is probably more correct. I have the fortune of interacting with hundreds of people, uh, more well, hundreds, many, many people at work. And there are a lot of issues with people in general, psychological issues. Uh, you sometimes have to even, uh, we have to let people go because of their behavioral issues. We warn them in advance, look, unless you're gonna change your behavior, we will have to let you go. And people struggle to change. Even if they are warned that their behavior is going to cause them to lose a job, they are not able to change. And I have seen this happen over and over and over. And I've seen this happen in friendships, relationships, inside work, outside work. And I think it's very, very difficult to actually be able to, to change. Because the way that we are, the way that we look at the world, the way that we behave is so deeply ingrained in us, in our psychological traumas, in our childhood, in the way that we grew up, that it's not with a flick of a switch that someone is going to change. In fact, even after going to therapy, it's also quite unlikely that someone will be able to change. So it's really, really difficult. It means really looking at the demons that you have inside of you, looking at your childhood, looking at the traumas that you have had and trying to change, not only for yourself, but also to be caring towards other people. But I want to reiterate that this is extremely, extremely rare, especially with a BPD or an MPD who have had deep, severe childhood wounds and are basically escaping from facing them. and. It's well known that actually it's very hard to recover from BPD and uh, MPD diagnosis. So I think that that's important to know because I think once you're ending the relationship or once you're in the relationship, you still have this hope that someone is going to change. If I look at my own uh, example, I left the relationship I was then convinced that this person was going to address their problems because that's what I would do. If I lose someone, then I would work on myself and try to get back together. And then we got back together three days after everything was back to scratch, you know, so there was no real change. But this is something that many people witness and I've witnessed uh, looking at other relationships uh, of people surrounding me that people rarely change. So that's important to understand. And to some extent, it's important that you kill that hope. The final thing, and, and you know, this might be uh, uh, other people, but uh, as I mentioned in the start, if you're the kind of person that is actually looking at these kind of videos, trying to understand things, then you're most likely going to be an exception and you are actually someone who is capable of change. But understand that that's not the situation for most people out there. The final thing is to actually spend the time to look inwards. Once you end a relationship or while you're still in a relationship with a BPD or an MPD, it's a great opportunity to really think about why am I unable to leave this relationship? Why, even if I know that this relationship is wrong with me, do I keep staying? And what are the reasons behind this? And you really need to figure out what those reasons are. Are you, for instance, insecure? Are you afraid that you're not going to be able to find someone like them? For instance, if they're very attractive uh, physically or intelligently, if that's even a word, <laughs> are you afraid that you won't be able to uh, basically find someone like them? And that's keeping you from leaving the relationship. Um, are you afraid about your own self-worth? These are all valid reasons that can explain why you're staying or you have stayed in a toxic relationship. And it's incredibly important that you address those and even talk to maybe a therapist about those. Because then you can make sure that in the next relationship, you resolve these issues so that you don't stay in a toxic relationship and are able to leave once the red flags flare up or show up. Um, for me, just to give you an example, for me personally, one of the big realizations, I spent a lot of time thinking about, you know, why did I stay in those kind of relationships, where, in particular with the BPD and MPD? And for me, the biggest reason was actually what I mentioned at the start of this video, was simply the thought, I could not conceive that there were people in the world that did not look at the world like I did, you know? I think I'm generally a pretty caring person. You know, I will take feedback when feedback is given to me. I will try to correct mistakes. And that's kind of how I've always been. And that's kind of how I've always expected people to be. So it was incredibly difficult for me to accept that it would be possible to be in a relationship with someone 
and that there will be issues and that those issues will not be addressed or resolved or that someone would misbehave because that's just not the way that I operate and it's unconceivable for me to understand that there are people that operate like this. Well, this is how it used to be. Now I understand that that's not the case. And I think it's important that you realize uh, all of these things. But the, the final word of caution here is that these are all a bit negative thoughts. So it's also important that you don't go too far on the other end of the spectrum and that you think that everyone out there is you know, selfish or uh, um, uh, negative or cannot change or so on. So you need to strike the right balance between realizing some of these harsh truths, but also not becoming uh, isolated or negative towards the rest of humanity, basically.